Today I'm going to be showing you how you can manufacture a NIV helmet at home and as far as material costs this was a little bit less than $20 for me to make and these have proven to be really effective in helping to treat COVID-19 for two main reasons. The first reason being that you hook this up to the hospital's air supply directly so there's no need for a ventilator and as some of you may have heard there is a worldwide shortage of ventilators right now and this has been a real issue with COVID-19. This helps bypass that. The second reason this can be really helpful is once the patient's head is inside, they're in an enclosed environment. So when they're coughing and sneezing, can be putting the medical staff at nearly as high of a risk. So the materials you are gonna need, I purchased a clear PVC film, which is this portion, and I bought it off McMasterCard.com. I got 0 0.016 inch thick. And you're also gonna need to buy a five gallon bucket you're also going to need to get a swim cap and you're going to need zip ties. You're going to need to either 3D print these parts and I will put a link to the STL to 3D print in the description of this video. But alternatively, you could also go to a hardware store and purchase these as PVC fittings. And then as far as tools, you're going to need to purchase a glue gun. You're also going to need a jigsaw and a drill. I'm gonna show you how easy this is to put on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my hand, widen the hole here on the bottom, and just stick my head through. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna make the collar for the NIV helmet. So I went ahead and just bought a five gallon bucket. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be taking out this metal hook, so we're not gonna need that. And I'm gonna take my drill and I'm going to be cutting two holes. Um, it doesn't really matter the diameter of the holes. I mean, you don't want to do huge, but um, in this case, I'll be doing like an eighth of an inch. Um, and this is really just to make a pilot hole for me to use my jigsaw. So. not quite big enough so I'm just going to cut a second one just to make sure I have plenty of room for the jigsaw blade to go in. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my jigsaw. Now the idea here is I'm going to be cutting all the way around, so luckily I kind of have this little little sort of lip here to, to allow me to guide along. But what I'm going to be doing is just kind of having a hard surface behind it so it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to slide the jigsaw blade in, I'm going to begin to cut, and as I'm cutting I'm just going to be rotating the bucket by hand. So, Alright. first piece of the collar cut out and now what we're gonna be doing here is uh, the collar is two pieces so we have the inner and outer piece so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put that upside down what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and slide the piece we just cut over the other piece um, and then we're gonna make a secondary cut um, same idea if we can just use this as a guide um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch back to my drill to cut the holes Alright, so just like before, I'm going to be drilling some pilot holes just for us to 
guide the jigsaw along, so. Okay, go ahead and cut a second hole. Just want to make sure I allow plenty of room for that jigsaw blade to get in there to get a good first cut going before we start rolling. All right, that should be good. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to my jigsaw. All right. Got my pilot hole here just for you guys to see. So yeah, now we just you know kind of have it sitting on the ground. We're just going to be making a uh, cut all the way around so we can have that second collar piece. Okay. So here we go. And you just want to be resting on this lip so we can sort of get it uh, consistent all the way around. All right. That looks good to me. Pick up where I left off. cut through all the way. It's at a little bit of an awkward point, so I'm just going to kind of support it on the back here. Come back in with my blade and finish up this cut. All right, so just like that, the piece has been cut. So now, as you folks can see, we have one, two color pieces. One is just going to slide into the other, just like that. So, yeah, that is how we are going to make the color. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out the clear portion of the nib helmet. So what I did was I went ahead and I purchased this PVC that is 0 0.016 inch thick, and I purchased this off McMastercard.com. And I went ahead and took a measurement of the helmet, and the inner diameter of the helmet, which is what we're concerned about, is... 11 and 5 16 inches. So if I take that number, I can then convert that and I can find that the circumference, so the overall length of the nib, should be 35.5393 inches. So I went ahead, measured it out, marked it. Um, so this goes along 35.5939 inches and I've made it 14 and a quarter inches tall. Um, so that size is just kind of something that is pretty standard for an adult. I mean, that should allow plenty of room, but maybe you're making a nib for somebody with, you know, large hair, you might want to make it a little bit taller. If you're making one for a child, you're also going to probably want to use a smaller diameter piece when you're making the bucket cut. So you're going to want to cut lower down in the bucket to make just a smaller collar to fit a child. And then accordingly, you're going to want to make this shorter. You know, if you have a small child wearing the helmet, it's not going to have to be so I would recommend using an X-Acto knife. You could use scissors, but X-Acto knife is gonna let you get a more accurate cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and follow along the tape. And like I said, you could use scissors, but you're just not gonna get nearly as straight and clean of a line as with an X-Acto knife. So this is definitely preferred. And I just have a little little material backing this just so I don't mess up my dining room table. All right, about halfway on this cut.
All right, and then we're gonna come over and cut this other side. And you might find they're gonna have to go back and recut one particular spot. There's one piece cut, and now the next piece we're gonna have to cut is the top of the helmet, the top of the clear cylinder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the bucket piece that we cut from earlier, and so this is gonna be the very top of the bucket. So that's the piece that I'm gonna want facing down to get the diameter from. And technically I should be scribing the inside to get the, the same diameter to match the helmet, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scribe along the outside just to allow a little bit of extra material for when we're assembling this later. So. I'm just going to scribe this all the way along. Make sure that when you're scribing it, you are absolutely certain that this collar is going to stay in place. Um, you know, you're making the marking and then you, you shift your movements, it's going to throw the whole thing off. So I just kind of strong armed it there. And now we're ready to make a cut here also. So this one's going to take a little bit more finessing to make the cut. You know, it's not just a straight cut. So. And I'm gonna be cutting towards the outside of that marking I made, just to allow a little bit more material for us to work with. And it's okay if you overcut a little bit, you just don't want to undercut. That's, that's really the name of the game. I'm actually overcutting on purpose here. Like I said, we want to allow ourselves extra material just to play it safe. It'll assemble just fine if you overcut it. it. Might look not quite as clean, but it'll assemble just fine. If you undercut it, you're gonna have to recut this portion. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. Right, we want to make sure we meet up our ending cut with our initial cut. Okay. So there we go. So we have our two pieces here. Okay, so what I've done is just got this glue gun here. And I'm just going to be going, following that seam along with the hot glue. And you could consider this like welding, except for plastic. 
So making sure to apply plenty of glue all along the seam. Definitely don't want to be stingy with it. Because if we miss a spot, that's going to allow uh, air leaks, which we definitely do not want. Right, I'm just gonna be moving this back piece along. All right. You might kind of get some gaps along the way, so you just wanna you know take your fingers and just make sure that you can Seal them together as close as you can while not allowing any overlap. And something I should say too is I moved this back piece a little bit too fast. I should have really let it sit there for a bit to let that glue solidify before moving down to this bottom piece. And there's sort of a larger gap here, so I'm going to use even more glue. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let this sit and dry for All right, so we've allowed plenty of time for this to dry. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. And I'm gonna use the hot glue on the inside. And this is really just to, to really ensure we're getting A, an airtight seal as far as this piece goes, and B, to help strengthen it to make sure it's not gonna just come apart. So. Got my glue gun, and there's different ways to do this, but in my case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my arm and kind of just hold this up, and then I'll come in with the glue gun, and I'll just follow along. I did make the mistake before of moving this piece a little too fast before the glue dried. So this time we're really gonna allow plenty of time for this glue to dry before we move it along. Like I said, you wanna apply a good amount of this glue on there, plenty of it, um, especially because sometimes it can be kinda hard to see where you made that original seal. So we're gonna use plenty of glue all along. In any spots where it looks like I haven't put enough glue or it might look like there could be potentially a small area where there could be a leak, I'm just gonna throw more glue on there just to play it safe. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken the inner collar piece and I've made it so that the, what would usually be the top piece if you're just looking at the bucket from regular view, what would be the top piece is gonna be facing down so what I'm gonna do now is I've got my hot glue gun again and I'm trying to match this piece and the circular piece we cut together. So what I'm gonna do is I have the everything lined up and I'm kind of aiming to have this piece right here glued so that it's touching that inner circle that we drew. That's, that's the goal. So I'm gonna come along with the glue, slowly but surely. And there's gonna be a lot of readjustment involved here. It's, it's not already gonna be set up perfectly, so it's, it's gonna be a process of gluing one piece, one segment, and then kind of letting it dry. And then you're moving along and you're kind of just moving the bag along so that it's gonna to continue to line up with that black circle. Okay, so now that it's been sealed all the way around, and like I said, you're gonna kind of have to do it in sections let it dry, move on, do another section to make sure that you have it properly lined up all the way around. But now we've allowed plenty of time for this glue to dry, so we're gonna begin the assembly. So we're gonna take this base piece, and this sort of lip here, we're gonna have that touching the ground. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our inner collar, and you gotta think about how this is gonna be oriented. So the smaller diameter section is also gonna to be touching the ground, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stick this inside the helmet. Go 
going to slide this in. I want to make sure that the clear plastic portion is going all the way down. And then once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of shimmy down the inner collar piece. And it might take a little bit of maneuvering to get it. So my goal here is to get the clear plastic portion to have some overhang, not, not too much though. Just enough for that glue to catch it. So kind of just going around, straightening it out. Okay, so that looks good. So we've got it pretty consistently all the way around. Just touching the inner and the outer collar. I've got that clear plastic portion touching. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to go ahead and glue it on. So this is just helping us to create a better seal. So I'm gonna just be gluing all the way around. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna be cutting two different holes. Each of them are gonna be three quarter of an inch. And what I've done is the, the portion of the bag that has all the glue going down, I want that to be on the back side. I don't want that in front of the patient's face. So the opposite side of that, we're gonna cut the two holes. It's not totally critical where you place them. I just kind of want them on the front and I want plenty of spacing. So I would say about at least three to four inches of spacing between them. So I've got my step bit here. It's gonna cut to three quarter of an inch at the widest diameter. So I'm gonna cut the first hole and I want this to be, I want this to be aligned within the center here. All right. And you got to be really careful here, but what I'm doing is basically I'm taking my two fingers, I'm putting it behind to support that inner bracket and I'm allowing that bit to go through you really gotta be careful here. This this can be dangerous, but I, I do need a way to support that inner collar. So I know that this bit is not gonna hit my fingers right now, I'm certain. Okay, so there's one hole down. Let's cut the second hole. That looks about good to me. So I've got a 3D printed part here, and I'll put a link to this STL for you to 3D print in the description of the video. But you can also just go to a Home Depot, really most hardware stores, and also have a PVC piece similar to this that you can buy. So what I'm going to do is just slide this through. You're going to have to thread this in by hand. Definitely gonna take some elbow grease to thread it into there all the way. All right, now we're gonna put this piece on the outside, thread this on. And we'll do the same. So the idea is one's gonna be the inlet, one is gonna be the outlet for air coming in. So we'll have straight air coming in from the hospital supply, and then we'll have it coming out once it's saturated with CO2 through the outlet. Same thing, we'll just thread this one by hand. OK, 
Okay. And then really the last thing, so I've got this swim cap here and it went ahead and cut a hole that's approximately two and a half, three inches in diameter. And it's easier to do this with two people, but I'll show you a way you can do it just one person. So I'm gonna catch this on the outer lip. I'm gonna throw my knee on it, just hold it in place. And I proceed to wrap it all the way around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this collar piece is coming up ideally to this line here, because what we're gonna do in a sec is we're gonna secure it down with a zip tie. So I'm just kind of going around, making sure that I have it nice and high up. You might have to, you know, give slack in certain areas, take slack away. Like this spot, definitely gonna give some slack. Take some slack here. Take some slack here. And take some slack here. Okay, so now next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take some zip ties. I've already tied these together. I just find it to be a little bit easier. And we're gonna wrap this around. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we want this zip tie to kind of be touching this bottom lip. And we're gonna to start to go around, make sure it's positioned correctly. And then once it is positioned correctly, we're gonna go ahead and secure this down as tight as we can get it. So that looks good to me. That's positioned good all the way around. So I'm gonna to start to secure it down. Going through, tightening up all these zip ties, making sure that I still have the swim cap under the zip ties all the way around. And then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a pair of pliers to really make sure I get this on there tight. As tight as possible. The tighter you can get this, the better. So that is good. So now the only thing left for me to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these zip ties. And there you have a NIV helmet, DIY 